Hi, I'm Milf Dukes with Peterbilt, Manitoba. Today we're going to talk about a few features and functions of the Peterbilt 579 and 567. How to open a hood to gain access to the engine. Step 1. Release the latches, one on either side of the vehicle. Step 2. Put one or both hands on the top of the hood front. Tilt the hood forward by pulling at the top of the hood, keeping your feet on the ground for stability. Keep pulling on the hood until you are certain the hood hold open device is engaged. To close the hood, Locate the hood hold open device on the driver's side hood hinge. Pull the lever out to disengage the hood hold open device. Gently lower the hood into place to avoid damage to the hood or the cap. Be certain to put the hood latches back into place. A few points of interest under the hood. Let's start on the driver's side. This is the windshield washer fluid reservoir. Here we have the engine oil level dipstick. This is the engine oil fill cap. This is the fuel system hand primer pump. Power steering fluid reservoir. Now moving on to the passenger side, engine cooling system reservoir, cab HVAC air filter, air filter maintenance indicator. There are three power distribution centers on this truck. The first one is located under the hood on the driver's side firewall. The second power distribution center is located driver's side, left hand side of the dash kick panel. And the final one is located driver's side inside the sleeper door. The battery compartment is located on the left side of the vehicle under the cab access steps. For seat height control, toggle switch either up or down. For lumbar adjustment, toggle the switch either up or down. The seat fore and aft adjustment. Locate the tilt telescopic lever. Push and hold the lever down fully. Push or pull the wheel to the desired height and angle. Push the lever back into lock position. The steering wheel contains controls for commonly used functions so that the operator does not have to take their hands off the steering wheel to operate. The switches on the left side of the horn pad control music. The switches on the right side of the horn pad control cruise control features. Here's a brief overview of the dash warning lights and indicators. The park brake lamp illuminates in the status indicator when the park brakes are applied. The ABS lamp illuminates during instrumentation self-test. Have the ABS system checked by an authorized dealer if the ABS warning lamp stays on for more than three seconds. The trailer ABS light illuminates during normal operating conditions to indicate a problem with the trailer ABS system. This should be checked by an authorized dealer as soon as possible. If the DEF warning lamp turns on due to DEF level, refill the DEF tank. Failure to refill may cause the engine to derate and limit vehicle speed. If the DEF warning lamp turns on due to system tampering, see your authorized Packard dealer to have this repaired. Failure to repair the system may cause the engine to derate and limit vehicle speed. 
The emissions malfunction indicator lamp illuminates when an engine emissions failure has occurred. The vehicle can be safely driven but should be serviced to correct the problem. The situation should not be considered an emergency. In some cases, the malfunction indicator lamp will activate in conjunction with the high exhaust temperature, diesel particulate filter, and diesel exhaust fluid warning lamps. The check engine lamp illuminates when a non-emissions related problem exists, but the vehicle can still be safely driven. The vehicle should be serviced to correct the problem, but the situation should not be considered an emergency. The low coolant level warning lamp illuminates with an audible alarm indicating critically low coolant level. The vehicle must be serviced to correct the problem. The battery warning light indicating low battery voltage. The DPF warning lamp. This warning symbol will appear when the DPF needs to be regenerated and then also during the regeneration cycle. The high exhaust system temperature warning lamp. If this light is on, do not park in an area of combustible vapors or materials. If this light is on, the temperature of the tailpipe, exhaust pipes, diesel particulate filter and or selective catalytic reduction device and surrounding components including enclosures and steps becomes elevated during engine operation or any regeneration event and can cause serious burns to the skin. Allow adequate cooling time before approaching. The traction control lamp illuminates when the ATC is regulating wheel spin and turns off after the traction control event has ended. This is the hill hold lamp. The hill hold feature is available as an option with certain automated transmissions. This feature holds a vehicle while on a hill to allow the operator to release the service brakes and press the accelerator pedal. This feature will hold the vehicle if the vehicle is attempting to go up a hill from a stop and either reverse or drive. In addition to faults and warnings, the display will also create pop-up messages for driver awareness. If the regen inhibit switch is left in the disabled position, this pop-up becomes active. Do not leave the switch in a disabled position unless you need to cancel or stop a regeneration. Running the engine with the switch in the disabled position will result in increased soot levels in the DPF and could eventually cause the engine to derate. The stop engine immediately message accompanied by a continuous warning sound is a non-suppressible pop-up that is displayed to warn the operator to stop the engine immediately in order to prevent damage. The headlamp switch is located on the left side of the steering column. Directly below the headlamp switch is the exterior light self-test switch. This switch will begin a sequence of turning on and off exterior lights so that the operator can verify functionality. Also found in this area are the load lamps, fog lamps, dome lamps and hazard warning lamps. The menu control switch is located on the right side panel. It's comprised of a back button and a push and spin knob. The menu control switch is used to navigate the instrument display. Push on the center of the knob to select or enter a menu item. Spin the knob to navigate around the menu items. Push the back button should you need to return up to a menu item. If the back button is held for two seconds, the screen will turn off. Directly below the menu control switch is the dash or instrument panel brightness control. The optional engine fan switch allows you to control the engine fan manually or automatically. The trailer brake hand valve provides air pressure to apply the trailer brakes only. It operates independently of the foot treadle valve. The right side dash panel contains the traction control switch hill hold or hill start assist disable switch, bunk dome lamp, regen inhibit switch, air suspension dump switch, fifth wheel slide switch, inner axle diff lock switch, 
the optional axle cross-lock switch, and the optional power takeoff switch. The lever action turn signal high beam switch is located on the left side of the steering column. This vehicle is equipped with a two-speed intermittent windshield wiper system. To activate, rotate the end of the turn signal lever to change the wiper mode from off to on. Continue to rotate the outer knob of the turnstock lever to adjust the wiper speed. If you need to use the windshield washer, push the outer knob in. Press and hold will activate the washer fluid and wipers. Instant press and release will activate washer fluid only. The high beam function is operated by the same steering column lever for the turn signals. High beams will not turn on if the headlights are turned off. Gently pull the turn lever toward the steering wheel until you hear the switch click and beam changes. The blue indicator light in the instrument panel will turn on and the high beams will turn on. A button on the turnstock will momentarily flash the marker and clearance lights when pushed. If equipped with the automated transmission, the transmission mode is selected by rotating the lever's outer knob. There is a detent for drive, neutral, and reverse. The instrument cluster will display the corresponding mode. For more detailed instruction on the operation of the Packard Endurance transmission, please see the associated videos. In addition to transmission functions, this lever also operates the engine brakes. Moving the lever downward will engage the engine brake. Increase the amount of engine brake by moving the lever further downward. Each position has a corresponding level of engine brake. To gain access to the top bunk, pull the lock release and lower the top bunk. To store the top bunk, lift it and push into place until it clicks. The sleeper recirculation filter is located under the sleeper bunk on the passenger side of the vehicle. Lift the bottom bunk to access the unit. The filter can be replaced without using any tools. To operate the fridge, rotate the knob to your desired temperature setting. 